On March 23, 1994, Aeroflot Flight 593 departed from Moscow, bound for Hong Kong with 75 passengers and crew members on board. The Airbus A310 was following a scheduled route, and the initial hours of the flight went smoothly. However, before the aircraft could reach its destination, it encountered a series of rapid ascents and dives that took it to a dangerously low altitude. Tragically, the plane crashed into the mountains of Siberia, killing everyone on board. An investigation later revealed that the disaster was the result of a series of fatal errors and misjudgments in the cockpit, a combination of misunderstandings, protocol breaches, and lapses in judgment that left no room for recovery. In the cockpit of Flight 593 were three pilots. Captain Andrei Viktorovich Danilov, 40 years old, was an experienced pilot with years of flying under his belt. At his side was First Officer Igor Vasilevich Peskaryov, 33 years old, who assisted with communications and navigation. A third pilot, Relief Pilot Yuslov Vladimirovich Kadrinsky, aged 39, was also present to assist on this 13-hour flight. It was common practice on long-haul flights to include a relief pilot, who would take over to allow the main pilots to rest, ensuring they were alert for critical stages like landing. Aeroflot pilot Vladimir Makarov, traveling to Hong Kong as a passenger, was also on board. After a stable takeoff, Captain Danilov eventually handed control over to relief pilot Kadrinsky so he could get some rest in the passenger cabin. Danilov planned to sleep for a few hours before returning to the cockpit to manage the approach and landing. Unfortunately, this handover set the stage for a tragedy that would unfold over the next few minutes. Although Kadrinsky was highly experienced, with nearly 9,000 total flight hours and close to 1,000 hours in the Airbus A310, he made a decision that would prove disastrous. Among the passengers were his two children, Eldar, 16, and Yona, 12. It was relatively common at the time for children to visit the cockpit, where they could see the plane's controls and meet the pilots. However, Kadrinsky, perhaps wanting to impress his children, invited them into the cockpit for a more interactive experience, allowing them to take turns in the pilot's seat. First, Kudrinsky's daughter Yona took the seat. Although he was technically out of his position, Kudrinsky adjusted the autopilot settings so that Yona would feel as though she was controlling the plane. Throughout her brief time in the pilot seat, Yona handled the controls very gently, and the flight continued without issue. Kadrinsky made minor adjustments to the autopilot heading to give her the impression that her actions were steering the aircraft. Importantly, however, Kadrinsky had not officially transferred control to his co-pilot, Peskaryov, and thus remained the pilot in command. No one in the cockpit, including First Officer Peskaryov or passenger pilot Makarov, objected to what was happening, as the mood remained light-hearted and relaxed. When Yona was finished, Kudrinsky's son Eldar took her place. As before, Kudrinsky encouraged his child to try moving the controls, adjusting the autopilot to simulate control for his son. Eldar, however, handled the control column with more force than his sister, holding pressure on it for an extended period of over 30 seconds. This sustained input led the autopilot to partially disengage, a design feature that allowed pilots to override the autopilot if they needed to take manual control. However, the system only displayed a light to indicate this change, which no one in the cockpit noticed. Now, as Eldar continued to hold the controls, the plane began to bank to one side. Still, none of the pilots realized what was happening. At around 8.55 p.m., Eldar asked his father why the plane was turning. Kadrinsky admitted he wasn't sure, and Makarov speculated that they had entered a holding pattern. Piskaryov agreed, mistakenly believing the bank was part of the autopilot's programmed route. However, within seconds, the bank angle became severe, and the mood in the cockpit shifted from calm to alarmed. None of the pilots understood what was causing the turn, and as the bank angle increased, so did the aircraft's descent rate. At this critical point, 
Kadrinsky, who was still out of his seat, became pinned to the back wall of the cockpit due to the G-forces generated by the steep bank. Unable to reach his seat or the controls, he could only shout instructions to his son, who had no flight experience and was completely unprepared for the crisis. Meanwhile, First Officer Peskaryov, though seated, could only reach the controls with one hand, struggling against the G-forces that pressed him back in his seat. Both men began urgently instructing Eldar, but the teenager, untrained and panicked, was unable to follow their commands. As the bank became more extreme, the aircraft began to lose altitude rapidly. The partially engaged autopilot system attempted to compensate by lifting the plane's nose and increasing thrust. However, this action only worsened the situation, causing the plane to stall. In response, the autopilot disengaged entirely. Another automatic safety system then activated to prevent a stall by pushing the plane into a nosedive hoping to regain airspeed. This created a chaotic and terrifying scene in the cockpit, with alarms blaring and voices overlapping in confusion and fear. Amid the chaos, Kudrinsky managed to pull himself back into his seat. With both he and Peskaryov now fully engaged, they managed to pull the aircraft out of the nosedive. However, they overcompensated, causing the plane to enter a steep climb that led to another stall. As the pilots struggled to regain control, the plane entered a corkscrew descent toward the ground. The cockpit voice recorder captured their frantic efforts to control the aircraft, but the situation had become overwhelming. Due to the confusion and urgency, there was no time to issue a distress call. The pilots' voices, alongside a cacophony of overlapping alarms, revealed the extent of their panic and confusion. With each attempt to regain control, they inadvertently made the situation worse. In a tragic twist, the cockpit voice recorder captured Kadrinsky's final words, we'll get out of this. Everything's fine. Gently. Pull up, gently. Despite their desperate efforts, the plane crashed into the rugged terrain of a Siberian mountain range, killing all 75 passengers and crew members on board. In the aftermath, investigators began piecing together the causes of the accident. Their findings highlighted several critical errors, chief among them Kudrinsky's decision to allow his children to manipulate the controls, a breach of basic safety protocols. The Airbus A310's autopilot system was also scrutinized. When the autopilot partially disengaged, it displayed a warning light but did not produce an audible alert, making it easy for the crew to overlook the change. These findings led to new safety recommendations, including improved pilot training on recognizing and responding to autopilot disengagement and other automatic system alerts. Beyond these technical adjustments, the crash underscored a vital lesson about cockpit responsibility. Allowing untrained individuals to operate controls, even briefly, on a commercial airliner introduced unacceptable risks. The incident highlighted the gravity of a captain's responsibility to maintain discipline and focus in the cockpit, regardless of personal or familial factors. One of the most heartbreaking conclusions of the investigation was that if the pilots had simply let go of the controls when the bank began, the autopilot's automated systems might have stabilized the plane. Instead, the pilots' panicked attempts to correct the problem only made things worse, leading to a fatal chain reaction that ultimately doomed the flight. In today's aviation industry, cockpit access and control protocols have become far stricter. After the 9-11 attacks in 2001, most airlines adopted sterile cockpit rules, which restrict access and limit non-essential communication during critical phases of flight. The days of inviting visitors, even briefly, into the cockpit are effectively over. These strict protocols ensure that pilots can focus fully on their responsibilities without unnecessary distractions. The tragedy of Flight 593 serves as a powerful reminder of why these rules exist and the potential consequences of breaching them. While the technical failures have been addressed and pilot training enhanced, 
The story of Aeroflot Flight 593 remains a cautionary tale about the importance of maintaining cockpit discipline. It underscores the crucial balance between human control and automated systems, illustrating that even small actions, when compounded, can lead to catastrophic outcomes. Flight 593's final moments are a sobering reminder of the need for vigilance, discipline, and respect for the procedures that keep air travel safe.